Tonight on the Scoreboard Show, we'll take you to Heston for their cross-country meet, the 7th Annual McPherson Soccer Invitational, plus we'll head out west for the Colby Tennis Meet. But that is not all, as we have more with girls golf, volleyball, and of course, tonight's football action. It is all coming up as we kick off week two of the fall high school season. Don't go away. Presentation of Scoreboard Show on Smoky Hills Public Television is brought to you in part by an underwriting grant from From Rural Telephone and Next Tech, providing the region with telephone, internet, cable television, and wireless phone solutions, Rural Telephone and Next Tech proudly support public broadcasting and all ventures dedicated to improving Kansas communities. The T Bird stream it, the sky is the limit, cloud is right along your way to your dream career. Come and see, 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 get on your way to what you want to be, Cloud County Community College, going anywhere starts here. Dove Chevrolet, Buick Cadillac. Providing sales, service, and genuine GM parts to the Golden Belt since 1957. Located at 4217 West 10th, right next to Brahms in Great Bend. Come see us. Welcome to week two of the Scoreboard Show. I'm Troy Waymaster, and tonight I'll be bringing you all the action as Casey has the night off. So let's get started by taking a look at the scores from tonight's football action. Just some of the scores from tonight's action. If you did not see your score, then be sure to give us a call with it as we'll be taking another look towards the end of the show. Now let's head out to the highlights from this past week. Last Saturday, the Colby High School Varsity Girls Tennis Team hosted their invitational on the courts of Fike Park and Colby Community College. With the temperatures much cooler and gusty winds, the players had to make adjustments to keep the ball on the court. 
Teams included Liberal, Osborne, Norton Community, Scott City Community, and the host, Lady Eagles. Number one singles Paige Ripchin from Colby faced Kathy Nguyen of Liberal. Paige wins 7-5. Norton took first place in number one singles, Colby second, and Liberal was third. In number one doubles, the Lady Eagles team of Megan Schroeder and Kiana Keck took first. Osborne's Jamie Cockerman and Taylor Noel took second. Scott City's Krista Kacharek and Amelia Vasco took third. Overall team totals had Colby taking first, Liberal was second, Osborne at third, Norton took fourth, and Scott City finished in fifth. The scoreboard show traveled to Phillipsburg on Tuesday for the Lady Panthers tennis quad. Teams participating included Norton, Russell, Trigo Community, and Phillipsburg. Last year's state champion Tawny Griffey of Norton continued her winning ways by going undefeated on the day and taking first in number one singles. Sage Ratliff of Phillipsburg took second. Allison Carr of Trigo faced Rhett Brown of Russell. Carr advances with a win and takes third for the day. In number one doubles, Trigo's Amelia Fabricius and Leah Flax went 3-0 for first. Healthy Christensen and Lori Beard of Phillipsburg took second. Number two singles featured Kelly Gudenkoff of Russell and Trigo's Ellie Sherwood. Gudenkoff wins the match and both players finish the day 2-1. Overall team totals have Phillipsburg and Trigo tied for first, Russell was in second, and Norton took third. On Saturday, Hoisin hosted their annual cross-country meet with participating runners from Maxville, Russell, Pratt, Fairfield, St. John, Otis Bison, and Central Plains. First in the girls' action, the times range from 16.06 to 24.47. Four of the top five times were held by the Pratt runners. Cheyenne Becker of Pratt crossed at 16.06, followed by her teammate, Kayla Romney, at 17.16. Maxwell runner Lisa Penner would break up the Pratt runners as she came in in third. Now back to the Pratt runners as Elizabeth Ash and Morgan Strong crossed at 18.39 and 19.16 for fourth and fifth place. The team action would see Pratt in first, with Maxwell in second. Now moving the boys race, it was the same teams in the same places as Pratt took first and Maxwell in second. Mario Perez of Pratt across the finish line at 18.56 for first place. Perez was followed by teammates Aaron Preble and Colin Hitz at 19.13 and 19.29. Then it was a photo finish as Russell's Daniel Barney took fourth, followed by Jacob of St. John in fifth. In the end, all the runners crossed just in time as the rain came pouring down. Now let's pour our way to another cross-country meet for this week. Heston Golf Park was the site for one of the biggest cross-country meets in the state of Kansas. The annual Heston High School Swather Special brings in teams from all across the area. Eight races were run featuring more than 600 runners, freshman to senior. Runners were split at the finish into 4, 5, 6A or 3, 2, 1A standings. In the girls' races, 3, 2, 1A Douglas took home the team title followed by Salina Sacred Heart and Ellenwood. Bishop Carroll was the top team in 4, 5, 6A. In the boys' races, Bishop Carroll was winner of the larger schools. Cape and Mount Carmel took second, and Liberal finished in third. In the 3 2 1 a team standings, Wichita Independent took first, Allen would finish second, and Solana Sacred Heart was third. In the sophomore race, Pedro Montoya of Allenwood took first with a time of 16.37. Finishing in second place was Angel Viveros of Liberal at 16.53. Joe Huerta of Tesket was second in 3-2-1A sophomore boys with a time of 17.51. Corey Donnelly of Salina Sacred Heart won the 3-2-1A junior race with a time of 16.06. For soccer action this week, we head out to the 7th Annual McPherson Invitational. Hayes High took on Salina South in the first round. 32 and a half minutes into the contest, it seemed to happen in slow motion as Hayes High's Tanner Stop knocks it off into the goal to light up the scoreboard. 15.47 left into the contest. Sean Herman battles with Salina South goalie for a loose ball, and Herman kicks it in for the goal, 2-0. Hayes High would not be done as Jordan Winholtz passes it off to Kellen Griffin, who takes the score to make it 3-0. Then carry that score to the end. In the first round game, it was TMP taking on the host team, McPherson. TMP came out as a barrel of fire as Michael Gonzalez gets the goal a minute and 31 seconds into the contest. McPherson comes answering back as Dylan Bobcock gets the rebound off of a nice save by Drew O'Brien, and Bobcock gets it in for the goal. It is tied up at the half, but in the second half, Ryan Horton finds the back of the net for McPherson and the win. Also with first round victories, it was Augusta over Independence, 
2 to nil, and May South of Wichita Independent 3 to 1. The semifinals are played on Thursday with Hayes High defeating McPherson 3 to 2. This sets them up to play May South in the championship game who defeated Augusta by 1. Third place matchup will be McPherson taking on Augusta, Salina South battling Independence for 5th place, and TMP taking on Wichita Independent for 7th place. Play begins at 8 a.m. on Saturday. Girls Golf on the Scoreboard Show is brought to you in part by... Dune and Peterbilt is a full-line dealer with a great lineup of new and used Peterbilt trucks. And there are some new but familiar faces in our service department. Dune and Peterbilt GMC, located at Highway 156 and 56, east of Great Bend. This week's golf takes us to Dodge City's Mariah Hills Golf Course. With par of the nine holes set at 37, it was Kara Copeland of Hutchison coming in 10 strokes over in 10th place. One strokes less, it was Michaela Nixon of Salina South in 9th and Megan Stewart of Garden City in 8th. Shooting a 45, it was Hayes High's Maddie Curry. Sixth place went to Emily Watson of Goddard with a 44. Then it was Holly Hatton of Hayes shooting a 43 for fifth place. Fourth was won by her teammate Natalie Bethel who shot a 42. Also shooting a 42 on the day was Garden City Dewar of Abby Shaddix and Abby Campbell taking third and second places. Well, not to be outdone, it was another Garden City golfer taking first as Mackenzie Thayer shot a 36 on the nine to take first place. It was one stroke under par. With team action, it was Goddard in third, Hayes winning second, and Garden City traveling home with first place. Other golfers participating in the tournament were from Hoisington, Liberal, Lakin, Great Bend, and Dodge City. Next, we hit Russell for some quadrangular volleyball action. First up, Russell versus Natoma. Natoma couldn't capitalize on any of their plays, and Russell managed to get a strong lead, taking the first game 25 to 16. The second game was even worse for Natoma, lagging behind by 14 at one point. The Lady Broncos took the game and the match. Wilson versus St. John's went to three games, all very close. The first went to St. John's by eight points. Lady Dragons got in gear though, taking the next two games 21-25. 22 to 25. Now we go to Russell versus Wilson. This had been a tournament, this would have been the final. The Lady Broncos took the first game 25 to 22, only to be defeated in the second. Despite that, Russell surged back, taking the final game by a wide margin. Next up, St. John's versus Natoma. This game cemented Natoma's pattern for the night. A weak start, and a strong mid-game push followed by a rapid decline in energy. St. John's had very little trouble taking this match. Wilson versus Natoma was no different. Natoma had settled into their groove, but the Lady Dragons were not about to hand over the game. Two games later, Wilson walked out with the win. Finally, Russell versus St. John's as two tired teams tried to muster all their reserves. The first game saw St. John's surge from behind to defeat Russell 25 to 23. But Russell would not be denied stepping up and taking the second game. Finally, after a grueling contest, St. John's managed to take the match. We will be right back with football action for tonight and a recap from a week one game that was played last Saturday afternoon. Presentation of Scoreboard Show on Smoky Hills Public Television is brought to you in part by an underwriting grant from Bethany College is helping me begin my path in life. I'm a student whose professors get to know me. I'm an athlete competing for the Swede. And I'm a community member involved in something bigger than myself. Are you ready to explore your path? Exhibit Customs does cars and trucks, wheels, tires, truck accessories, audio, video, subs and amps. It's not just the products they offer, it's the service behind the products. Get it tough, get it loud, get it mean, get it downright bad. Exhibit Customs, you're an individual, prove it. Hey, it is that time of the night for football action. Let us get it started with a week one football game. Football action on Scoreboard Show is brought to you in part by Simpson Farm Enterprises of Ransom, Hayes, Great Bend, and Beloit, your local spray coop and Apache dealer. Poison and host in Sedgwick on Saturday afternoon in an exciting football contest. We'll head straight to the last few seconds of the fourth quarter where it is tied at 14 with Sedgwick squaring up for a field goal to take the win. Logan Thompson gets the kickoff and it's no good. And in overtime we go. Poisoning gets the ball first. Derek Kaiser gets it off to Cody Stetler in the end zone. Caught and the score is now 20 to 14. Anthony Broder kick for the extra point up and it is good. Now the score is 21 to 14. It's now Sedgwick's turn and they have a score. 
Trent Stuckey finds Levi Voigt in the end zone for the six. Now Sedgwick has to make up the extra point to tie it up and go into double overtime. And no, they are going for two. Stuckey finds an opening and takes it in. Sedgwick wins in overtime. And now we'll go to the first game tonight as we see the Salina South Cougars come onto the field as they play the McPherson Bullpups. Salina South junior Cody Busby takes the handoff and breaks through as he goes in for the touchdown. McPherson quarterback Tyler Matthews as he throws a touchdown pass to Jordan Hart. Bullpups throw again, this time to Kyler Kinneman as he gets a good game. Cougar quarterback Christian Lindenberger calls his own number and picks up, watch this, a huge 50-yard gain. Nice play. Cody Busby up the middle as they go in for another Salina South touchdown. Bullpups market Huffton takes this pass going up the middle of the sideline as he gets a good gain. And this play, McPherson's Austin O'Bannon, as he carries the ball, it is stripped away by Salina's Andrea Jewell. Guys, this game was close. McPherson 41, Salina South 39. And now we go to the Lincoln Sylvan Lucas Unified game as we see the Mustang cheerleaders. And in this play, we have Leopards number Dayton, number nine, Dayton Walter, pass to number 23, Sean Ussery, as he goes in for the touchdown. Again, we have quarterback number nine, Dayton Walter, going up the sideline as he is finally tackled by Tyler Doherty. Mustang number 11, Brandon Poole, and he is on the sideline, and he finally gets tackled by number three, Omari Panis Hamid. Now watch this play as Lincoln gets back to pass, gets it off, and it is picked off by number 36, Brogan Naylor, as he runs it all the way back for a Sylvan Lucas touchdown. And once again, we see the Sylvan Lu Lucas Unified cheerleaders. In this play, we have Leopards number 23, Sean Ussery, as he takes the ball and has a really good game. Leopards number nine, Dayton Walter, pass to number 32, Alex Jackson, as he goes in for the touchdown final, Lincoln 74, Sylvan Lucas 42. And now we see this interesting dancing uh, Cardinal as we go to the Hutch Trinity El Celine game. Hutch Trinity's Ivan Guerrero takes the ball as he goes up the middle. In this play, we have Austin Rea as he dives across the goal line for a touchdown. Hutch Trinity's Tom Malloy catches this long pass down toward the goal. Malloy again in this play as he breaks a tackle for a good run. In this, in this play, the Cardinal defense stops the, the Celtics for a loss. And here we have Elseline quarterback Garrett Walter Walker throwing to Caleb Whitehair for a 15-yard gain. Final will be Hutch Trinity 14, El Saline would get six. Now on to the Rock Hills Osborne game as we see the Osborne Bulldog flag. In this play, we have it handed off to Rock Hills number 20, Alex Smith, as he goes forward for a push. Rock Hills number 30, Clay Cosson, gets a good gain here in this play. Rock Hills as they push up the middle as they finally get the touchdown. In this play, Osborne's number 34, Tyler Emerson, receives the kick and he is swarmed by Grizzlies. In this play, Osborne number 11, Damon Schur, and he gets tackled by number 30, Clay Cosson. Now we see the Osborne cheerleaders. This play, Osborne number 12, Ethan Slothauer, passes to number 11, Damon Schur. Here we have Rock Hills number 13, Blake Walter, as he goes up the middle for a touchdown. Rock Hills number 20, Alex Smith, as he goes in for the extra points. Final score is Rock Hills 34, Osborne 56. 
And now we see the Central Plains Oilers flag, some kids waving. And this play, we have Otis Bison back to pass, and he is sacked by Central Plains Joe Barton for a one yard loss. This play, Otis Bison on a quarterback keeper. We see Trevor Keller go up the middle for a nice game. In this next play, we have Otis Bison again. Keller hands off to Dylan Wisman, who gets it in for the touchdown. Otis Bison gets possession of the ball back, but Nick Shepman is there to push him back. In this play, we have Central Plains with the ball. It is fumbled. Who is going to get it? It is finally determined that Otis Bison recovers the fumble and takes over. Otis Bison with a lateral pass to Matthew Prodinger. He takes it downfield, tiptoes the sideline, and then finally steps out. Trevor Keller back with a nice long pass as he finds Zachary Stedskull, and he is in for the touchdown. Two-point conversion as Keller once again passes to Stedskull. The final score would be Central Plains 14, Otis Bison 15. Now we head back to Hoisington for tonight's game against Medicine Lodge. Hoisington with the handoff, but he is stopped at the line of scrimmage. Medicine Lodge now with the ball as Brand Hellman with a quick pass to Kelvin Schindliver, and he just gets quickly brought down. Once again, Hellman hits Schindliver, again runs downfield, but it is brought down short of the touchdown. Hellman with the pitch to Jake Beecher. He brings it to the near side and is knocked out of bounds by three Cardinals. Now, the question is, will they get a third time? Hellman decides to keep it and pushes it up the middle for a touchdown. Poison in now with the ball. They hand it off with a sm nice small gain. Bends their way downfield. Poison with the ball. This time they were looking to pass. Gets it off way downfield, and it finds, it finds Medicine Lodge hands. Uh, Brian Hellman, as he runs it back, he fumbles, but wait, he was down before he lost it. Regardless though, the Medicine Lodge fans go wild. However, Hoisman pulls out the win, 24 to 21. Now let's see the scores from throughout Kansas.
presentation of Scoreboard Show on Smoky Hills Public Television is brought to you in part by an underwriting grant from... From Rural Telephone and Next Tech, providing the region with telephone, internet, cable television, and wireless phone solutions, Rural Telephone and Next Tech proudly support public broadcasting and all ventures dedicated to improving Kansas communities. The T-Birds stream it, the sky is the limit, cloud is right along your way to your dream career. Come and see, 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 get on your way to what you want to be, Cloud County Community College, going anywhere starts here. Dove Chevrolet Buick Cadillac, providing sales, service, and genuine GM parts to the Golden Belt since 1957. Located at 4217 West 10th, right next to Brahms in Great Bend. Come see us. Well, that is week two in a nutshell. and week three, there looks to be no stopping as there are some good volleyball tournaments on Saturday, along with the championship games of the McPherson Soccer Tournament. So look out for our cameras as you never know where we might show up unless you follow us on Twitter, then you'll have the inside scoop. Until next week, remember to put on your game face, make up a sign, or just do anything to get the attention of our cameras, and next time we just might see you on the Scoreboard Show. Take care and good night. <laughs>